sound test one, two, three. Let's put the home assistant on a Synology NAS. All right, this one should be quick. So we'll just start by going to home-assistant.io, which is their official webpage. And then I don't know what IO stands for. We'll come up to documentation, installation. And on the right-hand side under installation, I'm just looking for install home assistant on other systems. And then I'm going to ignore all the skills and tools required and just click view tutorial. And then you could come down here to where it says Synology NAS, and that'll show you how to install it using Docker, but we're gonna use Docker Compose. So I'm gonna click Docker Compose and check it out. As the Docker command becomes more complex, switching to Docker Compose can be preferable. So we got that going for us. I'm going to highlight all of this, copy, and then I'm gonna go to my Synology NAS. And then I just wanna open up Container Manager, which if you don't have, as I explained in every video, Package Center, and then type in Container Manager. And as, I think as long as you spell Manager right, it's gonna show up, so. There it is, you can just click it, install it. If it is not showing up for you, that means it's not officially supported on your model of Synology NAS, but Google around and see if people have gotten it to work on your, on your make and model. Well, your make of Synology, whatever your model is. So in Container Manager, I'm gonna click on Project, Create, and for project name, I'll type in Home Assistant Path. So I need a path where it's gonna store all my cool Home Assistant stuff. So I like to just put it in my Docker share and I'll create a new folder called Home Assistant. I'm gonna leave this open because I'm gonna have to come back here in a second. So under path, I'll click set path, click that Home Assistant folder I just created. For source, instead of upload, we're not nay, we're, we will not upload, we will create. And then I'm just gonna paste in that Docker Compose YAML that I copied from Home Assistant's website. Next, the, on, the only change you need to make here is this, path to your config, which they're trying to make very obvious. When you're working in a Docker Compose file, basically um, in the volume section, if it's got something like this, it's saying whatever's to the left, this is known as your, I think it's called a host volume, you're hosting. So it wants a local folder that it can use. To the right, that's a, that's a um, I think it's container volume. You typically don't have to worry about that. There's a couple of instances where you do, but Home Assistant is not one of them. So on the left-hand side, I'm gonna give it a path. I'm gonna delete all of that, and I'm gonna go back to File Station, Docker. I'm gonna right click, oh no, sorry, I'm gonna go into the Home Assistant folder and create a folder called config. And then I will right click it, click Properties, and then just copy this location. So I'll just paste that to the left of the colon. So to the left of the colon, I've got my local Synology place where I wanted to install the config files. And the config files are gonna be like the information on your username, password, um, all your settings for Home Assistant, it's all gonna be stored there. And I will give, I'll give you a little quick tick, since this is a quick vid, no, quick tip, not a tick. Since this is a short video, if you delete all of this before the config folder text and just put a period, that's actually shorthand for what folder am I in? So you could just type in period forward slash config, and that is the same as writing out what we had before, since all of this is going in this folder here, this Docker Home Assistant folder. Pretty much it, that's, um, that's gonna install Home Assistant for us. So if I click next, I am not gonna set up a web portal via web station, so I'll click next. Start the project, once it is created, it's checked. I will click done, and there it goes, it's installing. So it's gonna download, extract, um, pull, 7D1AV, it's gonna do a lot of things here. But after it's installed, after it has finished installing all of this, you're gonna wanna know how to get to Home Assistant. So let's go back to the instructions. It actually tells us. So it says start, start it by running docker compose up minus D. Um, Docker's container manager is taking care of that for us. So when you start up these Docker containers, I guess that's the command that it's running in the background. But if you were running this on Linux, this is the command that, this is the command if you're running it in command line that you'd have to type in. But you can see here, once it's installed, this is how you reach it. So host 8123. Host in these brackets, we're gonna replace that with the IP address of your Synology NAS because that is what is hosting our Home Assistant. If you don't know the IP address of your Synology NAS, you can go into your NAS and click on the widgets up here in the top right. Make sure that system health is on. If you don't have it, just click the plus sign. Hopefully yours isn't critical like mine. Um, don't worry about it, yours isn't critical, so you're good. <laughs> and then where it says LAN 1, that should be the IP address of your Synology NAS. So to access Home Assistant, you're just gonna use this IP address. Oh, hey, check it out, success, it installed. Exit code zero is good, that's, that's what we want. That means that it's installed. If I close out, you can see that screen. If I click on container, that screen. I know it's weird that it's in both spots, but um, some Docker Compose files will have more than one container. In this case, it only has one, but you would see multiple if it needed them. So anyways, back, all right, so now let's go ahead and access our Home Assistant. So all we have to do is type in the IP address of our Synology NAS, colon 8123, and there we go. So if you type in HTTPS, it will not work. You're gonna have to make sure that it says HTTP and you should be in and you should be good and you can create your home and give it a name. I use my legal birth name that I have to put on all federal documents and then create a secure password that is more than three letters long and you are 
good. Um, this is not, then you're good. You've got Home Assistant installed. That was a quick one. One thing I'll say, if you are new to Docker Compose stuff is, you see we have, this, we have this config folder. If I come in here, it's probably got some files in it now. Yeah, check it out. So you can back this folder up. If you're using Home Assistant, you can use something like Snapshots or Hyper Backup to back up this Home Assistant folder. That way, if anything happens to your Synology NAS, you can back it up from you know an external hard drive or the cloud somewhere. Or a lot of these Synology programs actually let you go back a couple of days. So if Home Assistant isn't working for you one day, you could use something like Snapshots to actually kind of, it, it kind of works like Time Machine on a Mac. So you could just say, hey, restore this config folder to five days ago, and then your Home Assistant will work like it did five days ago. The other thing is this is only accessible inside of your house because that IP address that you're using, that IP address is only good within your network that your Synology NAS is on. So if you want to access Home Assistant outside of your home, you're gonna have to look into something like Tailscale. Tailscale, oh, I'm typing this way wrong. So you can look into something like Tailscale, which is available on the Synology Package Center. Type in Tailscale, there it is. So you can get Tailscale, or you can also look into reverse proxying, and that would be the method of you're opening up your Synology NAS to the internet, but you can access something like Home Assistant by typing in like mycustomurl.com, homeassistant.mycustomurl.com. So reverse proxying is what you wanna look into, but congratulations, you got the Home Assistant running.